Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Trading Simplified. Wow, this is our nice show already. Time is flying by. So what are we going to talk about? Well, there's a lot of people out there, and I don't want to point out anyone in particular, but they'll, they're always telling you they have something great coming up next month, and they're, they're going to be happy to sell it to you. And I have a, a client, a new client, and he checked me out about a year ago. Actually, he's not that new anymore. And he said, Dave, I'm amazed that you've got these guys out here that once a month they have this new thing that they want to sell you. And then you have you, and I, I did a Google on you, and I look back 20 years, and you're saying the same thing you were saying 20 years ago. Now, things have been tweaked a little bit since there, but I basically practice what I preach. And I want to talk about that today so we can see the methodology in action. I want to spend a little time talking about understanding the portfolio, and then we have a new mystery chart this week. If you're looking for where to find me, www.davelander.com slash stock charts. I'll give you the slides to all of these presentations. If you need to reach me directly, davelander.com slash contact. Now, again, I like to practice what I preach, and that's why I want to do these methodology and actions show good, bad, and indifferent every now and then, or good, bad, and ugly. Now, back over the past eight or nine weeks, we talked about trend, we talked about trend transitions, we talked about the methodology in action, we talked about setting the initial pro protective stop, which is vitally important, as you'll see in a few minutes. If you figure that out, you've figured out quite a bit. We talked about trading psychology, we got into setups, money management, a little bit of market timing, and now we're gonna get back to the methodology in action. Now, a few weeks back, we talked about market timing, and I just wanted to show that a little simple, simple system could work. And I updated that this morning, and as of last night, it's up about 12% since the last buy signal. And you're probably thinking, hey, Dave, the market's up 25% for the year. Well, that's what trend following is all about, is waiting for a trend to occur and then looking to get aboard that trend. Now, I didn't set out to kill buy and hold, although it beats buy and hold by a little bit. The main thing I set out for, or set out with, with the system was to avoid these big diaper change moments. In other words, when the market loses 40 or 50% of its value or so. So up about 12% so far. And if you go in and watch the market timing show, all of that will make a lot of sense. So what I really want to get into today is the prior mystery charts into portfolio. I'm going to cover nearly every trade that I've done over the past several months. So this is what the live portfolio looks like right now. We're going to come back to this as time allows at the end of the show, but I'd like, you, I'd like to walk you through all of these setups plus a couple of more that triggered during that period. Now, AUI, this is one of the mystery charts, and this was a TKO. If you go in and watch the show from a few weeks back, we talked about the TKO, one of my favorite patterns. And what's kind of interesting here is if you notice in the portfolio, it was empty and that was back in August. And that was because the market was trading sideways. You can see that all of the formulas in here are looking for values because there's nothing holding the places. So this was the first setup we saw in quite a while. It was a gold stock, even though the market was choppy, I figured it'd be worth a shot. It was a TKO entry of 350 a protective stop of 280 and if you subtract those two or subtract 280 from 350 that gives you 70 cents risk and then if you add that to the entry that gives you an initial profit target of 420. now we covered this initial profit setting initial profit target under the money management shows but let's just take a look at how it's worked out we had a nice trend higher and then a TKO. And what I liked about this particular TKO was notice that the trend was accelerating higher. And that's very important. And we'll touch upon that towards the end of the show once again. Buy was here. Stop was here. Initial profit target is up around, or I should say up at 420. And let's take a look at what it's done. Well, it hasn't done a whole lot. And I'm just turning my head to see what it's doing today. It's not doing much today. 
you can see it just kind of meandered back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And you're probably thinking, well, Dave, you're a trend follower. Why not get out? Well, I am a trend follower, but you have to have some rules on how are you going to follow that trend. And my rule is if I'm not stopped out, then I'm going to stick with the stock. It really hasn't done anything wrong just yet. And you have to have some rules. So my rules for wrong, or my rule for wrong, I should say, is if I'm stopped out, then I'm going to get out of the market. So people are like, well, that's dead money. And it's like, well, dead money means money that has no chance of making any further gains. But you don't know that. That would be a holy grail. If I knew a position that I was in was never going to take off, then I would just get out. But that's something that you don't know. And you have to learn to define these things when it comes to trading. And believe me, anyone who tells you they know exactly what's, what a market is doing, they're either delusional or they're lying to you. So again, as long as we're not stopped out, we're going to hold a course on this one. Now, back in August, if you rewind your charts and go back and look at the S&P 500, market was kind of rolling over a little bit back then, and we were beginning to see a few shorts setting up. And one of them was TSCO, Tractor Supply. And I think I talked about this one on David Keller's show. I'm not sure if it was a mystery chart or not, but I think I talked about it as a guest slide on his show. And we had a first thrust down or a pullback, however you want to look at that. And that's something that we covered a few weeks back. We're looking to sell short here, stop up here, and initial profit target down here. And after initial little kickback, after triggering, there was about a week or so we're in the trade, really questioning our sanity. It began to sell off nicely. Now, as it, began, as it begins to sell off, we begin to trail that stop lower. And we continue to trail as long as it moves in our favor. Now, notice that it did go down and hit the initial profit target. So when that happens, we bring the stop down to break even. And that way, barring overnight gaps, the worst we could do is break even on the remainder of the trade. And we'll actually make a little bit on the trade overall. Now, if you, one thing I've been thinking about a lot lately, and this is something that I've been working on for the last probably 30 years, is if you figure out a way to make a little money short-term trading, but position yourself to where you could still capture a piece of that longer term move, you could eventually own the world. In other words, have your short term trading smooth out your longer term drawdowns. And I'm working on that. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. And, and the, all the examples today are putting that thinking into action. Now, here's another one that we have triggered into, but have since, since stopped out. We had a bow tie set up here. And again, go back a few shows for the bow ties. And then we had a sharp little move lower, kind of a TKO type of move, a little one bar pullback. The entry was here, stop was here, initial profit target up here. And you could see in one day it triggered, rallied 60%, but unfortunately rolled back over and stopped us out on the remainder. But at least we made a little bit via a trailing stop on the trade, on the second low. And if we have time to get to the portfolio, or like I said, go rewind a few shows, this will make a lot more sense. One of my favorite, I was on Mary Ellen's show, um, the market, I forget the name of her show, the Market Edge, I think. And uh, the first show she had me on, we did, we talked about IPOs. And IPOs are one of my favorite things. And I think this is something that I really wanna do a show on coming up, especially once we some of these ones we're looking at begin to take off. But anyway, this was one from a while back, INMD. It had thrust higher and then kind of made like a TKO type of move lower. And those are the parameters there. Entry at 22.20, a stop at 17.50. The initial profit was 26.90 and 4.7 points and all that. Now that seems a little extreme, but that's what it called for. It was a pretty volatile stock. And you could see it's an IPO. It's only been public for a little while when we were looking at this particular chart, only a few weeks. And then it pulled back and made a bit of a TKO type of move. Entry here, stop down here again, and then initial profit target. And this is what happened. It began to take off. We were able to get our initial profit target out. We got our stop up to break even. 
and we stopped out. And it's like, well, okay, better than a poke in the eye. On a trade like this, we're looking to make 1% overall if stopped out on the remainder. And if it keeps going, then we make a lot more than just 1%. But we take those partial profits just in case that's all we get, just in case the market comes back in and stops us out. Well, let's take a look at what happened since. Well, the stock has nearly tripled since. And that's a bit of a bummer. And I did have one or two clients that were able to ride out that correction in there and, and, and stuck it out. You got to be really careful in doing that because if it goes too far, at some point, you have to have an uncle point where, you, where you're willing to get out. My wife often tells me, you're right, but early. Can you do something to fix that? <laughs> I wish I could, babe. But you could see that at least we were in the hunt on this. And this is the ultimate goal to capture a big move like this. And a big move like this where a stock doubles and triples can pretty much make your year on your entire portfolio. So a bit of a bummer we didn't get all that, but at least we got something out of the trade. And you do have to allow yourself to stop out. The old hedge fund adage comes to mind. He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. T and K, another one of our mystery charts from a while back. Those are the parameters there. Nice trend higher, a little bit of a pullback. And if you compress this chart a little bit, that trend's a lot more impressive than it looks. That's a, about a triple of a short period of time. Entry was here. Now remember, our entry is always above the market for longs to help ensure that the stock is moving in the intention, intended direction. Stop down here, initial profit target is there. And we just barely made it to the initial profit target, but now I'll stop as that break even, and all we have to do is sit back and relax. I know, ha ha. But hopefully, and I know it's a dangerous word, hope, but hopefully be able to ride out a long-term trend, something that looks like that INMD, except that we don't get stopped out first. One other point, notice that as the stock moves in our favor, we will adjust that stop higher. A lot of times people say, well, do you wait until you hit the initial profit target before you move the stop? And I have some clients in the past that have done that, but there's always a trade-off. You're going to lose more when you're wrong. And the trade-off is you will occasionally catch a winner that would have possibly stopped out by trailing that stop ahead of time. But I do trail a stop on somewhat of a one-for-one -one basis, meaning that the stock goes up one point, I'll bump my stop one point. And I use the word somewhat because I'm a little bit more lenient now, more now, more nowadays, as he tried to say, than I used to be. And what I'm doing there is I'm trying to give it the position as much room as possible to work because markets have become a little bit more choppy in more recent years. And you can see as it continues to move higher, we've bumped that stop up along with it. Now, CMRE, this is another one of our mystery charts. Those are the parameters right there. This is straight from the service spreadsheet that I publish every night. And I'll give you the link towards the end. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put the link to the archives and I would recommend that you go in and watch as many as you can stand. So you can see what I was seeing when I saw these initial setups. Well, we have a really nice trend higher. You should be able to draw a big blue arrow in the direction of the trend. Nice little TKO move. Buy is here, stop is down here, and the initial profit target is at 958. And so far, we haven't gotten there, but that's okay. I like to show you some trades as they unfold. So maybe next week, we'll hit that profit target and we'll be talking about it. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. I have a few more charts to go through, and then I want to hop into the overall portfolio and walk you through some of the money management and the psychology of that money management. When we left off, we were talking about the mystery charts and revealing those and seeing how they turned out good, bad, and indifferent. And fortunately, they turned out fairly well so far. Now, here's another one. Remember, as I said earlier, back in August, September, market was looking a little iffy. 
I was seeing some shorts setting up. This is a transitional pattern, a little bit more advanced. It's what I call a first thrust. It's where you have a thrust down from highs. By the way, you notice the symbol in here, AXU, that's a metals company. This one did not trigger, and that's why we're not going to cover that one today. No trigger, no trade. I'm amazed at how many times you can avoid a losing trade by simply waiting for an entry. So we had a nice little thrust higher from highs. Remember at new highs, everyone who owns a stock is happy. Now, if that stock begins to sell off, people who bought late in the game are gonna be tempted to dump fairly soon and shorts will tend to pile on. Now, if that market doesn't reverse right back up with something like a pattern like a TKO, then the market could be in trouble. So we've had a little bit more than a knockout move here, a sharp thrust lower followed by a pullback. So we decide we're gonna sell short here. Our stop is gonna go way up here close to the old highs. Now, when I talked about setting stops a few weeks back, kind of feel like last week at Bandcamp, <laughs> but we talked about stops at Bandcamp a few weeks back. You wanna put a stop where a, it's outside of normal volatility, and two, it's far enough away so that if it got hit, you know you were wrong. And I figured up close new, close to new highs would be a good spot for a protective stop. Because if it goes all the way back to new highs, then obviously as a trend follower, you're wrong. We're looking to catch an emerging trend lower, okay, a new trend. But if it goes on to make new highs, then the old trend, the uptrend, remains intact. And one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately, not to pimp my little shows, but, if, but I think that setting the stop show might be one of the most important shows out there so far. I know everybody's a setup junkie, but money management is crucial. And if you could figure out where to place that protective stop, you've won 70% of the game and it's kind of a yogiism. I guess the other 90% of following the plan would be mental and just following along, which is often easier said than done. Anyway, so if you go, if you have the stop, if you know where your stop is, you know where your entry is, then your initial pro profit target is just the, in this case, the entry minus the distance to the stop. And we could see that it did trigger and it didn't do whole, a whole lot for quite a while. It went about a month of going sideways. And I think we had one day, maybe an afternoon here and there, but for the most part, we have only had one day where we were profitable on this. And this is where the trading psychology comes in. Very hard to hold on to a trade that's grinding sideways. And worse, in a case like this, you're actually losing money on the trade, but patience pays off. Not always, sometimes you just get stopped out and you have to live with it. But if you exit early, nine out of 10 times, you're never gonna catch a big winner. Yeah, you might avoid some losers here and there, but you're never going to win. And, and the way you win in trading is keep your losses small and have the occasional home run. I think it was, I wanna say Druckenmiller once said the secret the success in trading is preservation of capital in home runs. And that's the goal in what we're doing. We're taking a little swing trade out of these positions, and that's IPT, the initial profit target. And then we're getting that stop down to break even. So again, the worst thing we could do is break even on the remainder of the trade, and then hopefully stay with the trade for a long, long time. Now, somebody asked me a few days ago, hey, I don't know how long the trend's going to last. And it's like, well, neither do I, and no one does, okay? If you knew how long the trend would last, whatever trend that may be, you would end up owning the world, and that's impossible because you have no idea. So I often say you can't predict a trend, but you can follow them forever. So and here we have, again, nothing happened at first, but as the stock began to move in our favor, we started to trail that stop lower, and then we got to break even when it pushed even further lower and then we continue to trail that stop and then there hasn't been any trailing of the stop lately because it's pulling back once again but you can see on the short side which is a little harder to trend follow on the short side because 
you have these sharp retrace rallies, but this is a bit of an anomaly. We're actually doing pretty good on this particular stock. Now, one reason that I short, just FYI, is not because you're gonna get rich on the short side. Technically, you can only make about 100%. There's a few things you can do to help improve those odds a little bit and make it more than 100%. But the argument is, if you get in a stock and it goes to zero, you made 100%. And there's some truth to that. If you're reshorting possibly along the way, then you can make a little bit more. But as a general statement, yes, you can only make 100%. The great thing about the short side though, is it is the only way obviously to make money if the market begins to roll over. But more importantly, it helps you to see both sides of the market. My friends who run a lot of money and are long only oriented, nothing wrong with that. That's just how the charters are set up and that's where they found themselves. But they always tend to see the market as glass half full and never glass half empty. They always tend to be a little bit positive. And usually they're right because as a general statement, the market usually goes up. But occasionally, as you know, it doesn't. And I think if you learn how to short, you're able to see both sides of the market and you become a lot more objective as a trader. So here's another one of our former, former mystery charts. I think I have revealed every mystery chart that we've shown so far and I have a new, new one for you in just a few minutes. But if there's one that I missed, please let me know. I'll be happy to bring it up next week or whenever. So here's this particular stock in the portfolio. We had an entry of 44.80, initial profit target of 52.90, and a stop was at 37.70. That seems kind of wide, but that's what it called for based on the volatility of the stock. So let's take a look at what happened. Notice the big blue arrow pointing higher, nice little TKO type of move down, little trend knockout. Our buy was here above the TKO bar. Our stop was way down here to give it some room. And then our initial profit target was up here. And notice that just yesterday, the chart is yellow, but this is yesterday's chart. We went up there and we tagged it. And last time I checked, this one was actually doing pretty good right before the show. So we've taken partial profits half and now our stop is up at break even. And now we're in a wonderful position. And I hope, and there is that word again, hope, but I hope over the next 10 weeks of next 10 months and then if stock charts will have me over the next 10 years, we'll still be talking about this stock and we'll be in longer term trend following mode. Now, once again, as the stock moved in our favor, we don't just wait until that initial profit target is hit. We will bump that stop up a little bit along the way. And that helps to reduce our risk just in case the stock comes right back in and stops us out. And again, as it moved higher, we moved that stop higher along the way. And once you hit that initial profit target intraday, you're gonna move that stop higher. So now would be a good time to kind of break that down a little bit. So if you're trailing a stop, and I get a lot of questions on trailing stops and there's a, there's a bit to it, but here's the general rules. You wanna, if the market goes up, let's say one point, you wanna, as a general statement, raise your stop one point, although I've been a little bit more lenient in recent years as discussed earlier. And then if the initial profit target is hit during the day, I mean, obviously when else is going to be hit, but if it's hit during the day, obviously you want to immediately raise your stop up to break even on the rest. Sometimes you might get a spike higher and the stock will implode afterwards. And if you're willing to take those profits intraday, and I'm not a huge fan of limit orders, but sometimes you can put a limit order in, especially in something thin like this, PLMR, I'll use limit orders in a stock like this. That way you get paid. And then just make sure that you bump your stop up intraday. And then after you achieve that initial profit target, then you begin to slowly and gradually widen your stop out. And often that's not by doing anything, okay? Let's say the stock goes up, a stock like this and it's 50s. Let's say it goes up 30 cents, 40 cents, which is really just noise, not much at all leave your stop where it is, and then your stop widens out by 30 or 40 cents. And that'll make a lot more sense if you go back and look at the money management. Now, here's our mystery chart for the week. You can see longer term, it's in an uptrend. 
But more importantly, in more recent times, it has begun to accelerate higher. And this is one I haven't really officially named when this happens, but I call it third gear or overdrive or something where you have a stock that works its way higher and then begins to accelerate higher. And then it goes even more, I guess, parabolic, for lack of a better word. So this is our setup coming into today. And again, notice that it has an acceleration of trend. So let's say you have a trend that looks like the one on the left and it rallies up 10 points. Well, you're like, okay, that's in an uptrend and it's accelerating. Well, a lot of times people will send me charts that look like the one on the right. And yeah, longer term, it's up 10 points, but the trend has begun to slow down. So on the left is good, tar, uh, Tarzan speak, good. <laughs> You're gaining steam, okay? On the right, you're a losing steam. Now, a lot of times when you have those gaining steam type of patterns, the TKO could be a wonderful move to get in because the sharks get really anxious thinking that, hey, this thing is topping out when it begins to sell off and they pile on. So I snuck in a little bit of stock selection there. So again, we have a TKO. Our entry is going to be right here because the TKO bar isn't super wide. Our stop is down here. Ideally, I'd like to see a setup with a deeper TKO like I'm drawn in here. And that's why I'll stop is way down here. If it pulls back to this consolidation, then maybe it's in trouble. And again, you can see the consolidation to your left. So if it gets back there, we know it could be in some trouble. Now, entry plus a stop is going to equal the initial profit target up here. Okay, let's talk for a minute about understanding the portfolio. This is the current live portfolio. It looks a little bit better than this today because these numbers are a couple days older, knock on wood. What we're doing is we're risking 2% on a hypothetical 100K account. I say hypothetical just to keep legal from uh, <laughs> getting in trouble. Okay, so all of this is for educational purposes only, as you know. And we're going to risk $2,000 per trade. Now, we divide that by our stop. And if we get stopped out, we that's based on the number of shares, I'm sorry, if we get stopped out. And you'll notice on a 10 point stop, like in tractor supply, we're only trading 200 shares. But on something like the little gold stock where we have a 0.7 stock, we're trading 2850 round numbers in the shares. Now we're taking profits on half of the position for a swing trade, just in case the longer term trend doesn't materialize. And then we're keeping a piece on half just in case it does. And that, again, is where the real money is. Okay, if you're looking for more information and the slides from all the shows that we've done up until now, you can go to davelandry.com slash stock charts. And if you're watching this show live, give it about, I'll give you about two or three hours to get those slides processed and put it there. If you have to reach me directly, you can reach me at www.davelandry.com slash contact. I want to thank everybody for watching. I appreciate it very much. Everyone have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you guys next week.